as the evening goes along, we'll uh, keep you up to date on the other ball games being played. And there is a full schedule tonight in the American League. Chicago playing at Washington. They've completed two innings. They are scoreless. Bart Johnson pitching for the Chicago White Sox and Jerry Janeski, a former Chicagoan, pitching for the Washington Senators. Minnesota is at Boston. Boston Red Sox breathing right down the necks of the Baltimore Orioles. Wins trying to cool them off, and Minnesota leads one to nothing at the end of one inning. Jim Cott, who pitched the two-hitter against the Yankees here at the stadium in his last start, going tonight for Minnesota, and Mike Nagy, a New York lad, pitching for the Boston Red Sox. Later tonight, Baltimore, Kansas City, Cleveland at Oakland, and Detroit at California. The Mets play at Houston tonight. This afternoon in the National League, the Philadelphia Phillies shut out the Chicago Cubs one to nothing. Chris Short pitching a five-hitter for the win. Milt Pappas was the loser. Later tonight, San Diego at Pittsburgh, San Francisco in Cincinnati, Montreal at St. Louis, and Los Angeles down in Atlanta. Right now, Steve Klein is ready to pitch to Tommy Harper, leading off for the Milwaukee Brewers, and ready to step in behind the microphone for all the play-by-play -play action, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Phil Rizzuto. All right, thank you, Frank. And Tommy Harper, not off to as good a start as he had last year, hitting 205, right-hand batter. As Steve Klein is ready, his first pitch of the game is a little bit low, ball one. So the ball game is underway. On deck, Mike Egan. Tommy Harper is 5'10", but weighs only 168. Right-hand batter. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Jerry Kenny is in at third, and Harper tried to pull an outside pitch by Jerry, which is always dangerous. You don't usually get good wood on that side pitch. He's looking for a pitch inside. And the Yankees want to keep him off base. He can really fly. The pitch is right in there. Strike ball. Harper turns around and really argues with plate umpire Merrill Anthony. He thought the pitch was low. Remember, neither team had batting practice. Looked like it was going to rain and did rain earlier this evening, but stopped just in time. Tommy Harper had 77 stolen bases last year. He checks his swing. The ball gets away from Munson, and it's even at 2-2. Two and two. He had quite a year when you look at it, Frank. He certainly did. 1969, he stole uh, 73. That's set a modern American League record for stolen bases. I was bases. wrong. On, I was reading base on balls. He had 38 stolen bases and 77 more. Yeah. And 73 stolen bases over the year before. Ah, that's right. All right, here's the 2-2 delivery. High, and it's a full count, three and two. And that's the first high pitch that Klein has thrown above the belt tonight. Nine out of ten of his pitches are down around the knees. Now we've got the first payoff pitch of the night. And it's hit foul way out in front over the roof and right on out of Yankee Stadium. Tommy batted 296 last year, had 82 runs batted in, and 31 home runs. Again, the 3-2 pitch. Bouncing ball, Kenny has the short hop. Fires to first, and there's one out. As Danny Cater skipped across the bag, fielded it very well, went with the throw. Kenny throw to the inside part of first base. One out, and now Mike Egan. Mike hitting 276 has a double, a triple, two homers, and five runs batted in. Mike, a left hand batter. Well built, got all the tools. Line curve, bounce to first base. Fair ball, Cater up with it, flips the Klein. He beats Egan in a race for the bag after losing his cap about 10 feet from first base. Well executed play by. Danny Cater and Steve Clyde. We really have close quarters here tonight. Extra cameras in here for the game of the week tomorrow. Phones all over the place. And a big fella sitting next to me, Frank Messer. And now, Johnny Briggs. A left-hand batter, the curve is in there, strike one call. Briggs was acquired from the Philadelphia Phillies for Pete Cagle, outfielder first baseman, and Ray Peters, a minor league pitcher. The next pitch is a swing and a foul back strike two. 
I don't know where these phones are supposed to be, Phil. I just answered one. They wanted two hamburgers and a Coke to go. <laughs> They're ringing all over the place here. By the way, Johnny Briggs lives in Patterson, New Jersey, in the Garden State. 6'1", 195 pounds. And girls, he is single. The pitch outside and high, a ball and two strikes. Last year with the Phillies, he batted 270 in 110 games. Had nine homers and 47 runs batted in. The one-two delivery, a change-up. He's out of there. Try to check his swing. Couldn't do it. Beautiful pitch by Steve Klein. And the Brewers get down in order in the top of the first. And at the end of one half inning of play, it's Milwaukee nothing. The Yankees coming to bat. Of course, U-Haul has been doing a great job helping people move now for over 25 years. They offer over 50 different combinations of trucks and trailers to get people and possessions moved from one home to another, inexpensively and conveniently, with free road service, $2,500 cargo insurance, and one-way rentals. But did you realize that U-Haul trailers and trucks can simplify all kinds of moving chores? Like hauling gardening materials, lumber for a do-it-yourself project, or wood for the fireplace. No matter what your hauling needs, think first of U-Haul trucks, trailers, Econoline vans, and car top carriers. With over 14,000 locations all across America, U-Haul is sure to have what you need when you need it. U-Haul, serving mobile America for over 25 years. See Ruth's American, 1560 Central Avenue Colony, A to Z Rental Center, 100 Everett Road, Albany, John Irish and Son, Columbia Turnpike, East Greenbush, or consult the yellow pages for the U-Haul dealer. Nearest you. Well, we're watching Skip Lockwood take his warm-up throws. Lockwood won his uh, first start of the season, went all the way to uh, beat the Chicago White Sox 4-1. to Last time out, he was defeated, and that was also by the Chicago White Sox in a 7-1 to ball game. Just a quick reminder, this program is authorized under rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or the use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the New York Yankees is prohibited. Horace Clark ready to take on Lockwood and here's Phil. All right, Frank Horace batting 268, four doubles, six runs batted in. Way in at third, Tommy Hopper, the pitch to Clark is in there, strike one ball. Skip Lockwood, six feet tall, 195 pounds. Born in Boston, now lives at Norwood, Massachusetts. As Frank told you, his nickname is Skip. That's ball high and tight, one on one. Claude E. Lockwood, Jr. And his hobby is golf. Not a bad hobby. The one one pitch, a curve inside, ball two, two, one. No score in the bottom of the first. On deck, Thurman Munson. The right hand of wine. Low and inside, ball three, three and one. After the first pitch, Hopper has moved back at third base. So Horace Clark with a 3-1 count on him. The pitch is right down the middle. They had Clark taking all the way. Horace has 11 walks this year, and that's the most for any Yankee player, which is unusual because Horace is usually the last one in walks. There's ball four. So Horace gets his 12th walk of the year, and the Yankees have their first base runner of the night, and here's Thurman Munson. And I understand Thurman will be leaving us for a couple of weeks on and off, Frank. Going for the military. players have to uh, get their military commitments in. That's right. All right, Thurman will be going uh, down to Fort Knox, Kentucky. And a little huddle with Ted Kubiak, the second baseman, and Skip Lockwood. As Mike Hegan comes over the whole clock at first, Horace has two stolen bases on the air. Munson batting 180. Nine hits and 50 at bats. One homer, seven runs batted in. Nobody out. Really strange when you're seeing a team for the first time in a long, long time. Pitch to Munson is low ball one. 
this uh, Kid Lockwood's got a good fastball. He uh, came on strong the latter part of the 1970 season. He won three out of his last four starts. This ball is live, Frank. It really moves, and that could be his problem right now early in the game. Clock leads away. The pitch is low again. Ball two. Two and nothing. Ellie Rodriguez started his big league career with the Yankees. On deck, Roy White, who now goes back to check his bat. Might have a little chip in it. Clock with a big lead. The pitch is low again. Ball three. Well, Lockwood having problems. That is strange, Bill. And now uh, West Stock, the pitching coach, is going to run out to try to settle him down. It's strange. Uh, a kid whose ball, or any pitcher, not necessarily, could any pitcher whose ball really moves like that, very often will have trouble early in a ball game until he gets just a little bit tired. And... Uh, right and he gets his rhythm and uh, when you get a little bit tired and you're not over strong your ball will go where you want it right now it's really dipping and sailing three and nothing on Munson Thurman will be taking all the way on this one Those clock will have to be careful out there you won't be going any place on this pitch the 3 0 pitch is ball four so, two walks in a row by Skip Lockwood, and the Yankees have something going. As Roy White is the batter. Roy hitting 321. This would have to upset Dave Bristol now, the Milwaukee Brewer manager. He knows the Yankees like to go to that running game. They'll go to it as soon as they get that on. He's got to have that in mind. And uh, Milwaukee, not the kind of club necessarily that can come back from an early deficit of the ball game. All right, Frank, the runners lead away. The pitch is in there. Strike one call. And the Yankees with outstanding speed on the bases. And at the plate, Clark is second, Munson at first, and White the batter. And on deck, Bobby Mercer. So the first four Yankees can really fly. Nobody out, no score. The pitch to White is a curve. Bounce foul off his foot. Out in front of the plate. Plate umpire Merle Anthony wants to look at it and keeps it in play. By the way, Johnny Stevens umpiring down at third base. Quite a story. He's supposed to be retired, but he is replacing Larry Barnett, who is also serving military reserve duty this weekend. Oh, even the umpires are in there doing their bit for their country. All right, the runners lead off first and second. Ready for the two-strike pitch. Looped into left center field, moving over Dave May to his right. He's there, makes the catch, and bluffing, going to third is Clark. He draws the throw, but then goes back. Goes one out in the battle, Bobby Mercer. And what a start Bobby is having. Been about 66 times, 25 hits, has scored 11 runs, four doubles, two triples, three homers, 12 runs batted in, and four stolen bases. So he leads the Yankees in many categories coming into the ninth game. Clark still at second, Munson at first. The stretch, look at the runner. Pitch to Mercer is the strike on the inside corner. On deck, Danny Cater. Dave May over in right center field on Mercer. Pitch to Bobby as a curve bounce foul off his foot. The inside part of his right foot and kicks back to the uh, wall. Bobby Mercer is second in batting in the American League, and uh, naturally the fella ahead of him is Tony Oliva. New stance and all. That's right. Oliva's hitting, uh, I think, 397. Just uh -huh. close to the 400 mark. And kid Ralph Gar for uh, Atlanta leads the majors. About 4... 12. 12. 4 12. All right, Mercer's in there. Now, suddenly Lockwood is finding the plate. He was ahead of Roy White, got him to fly out. He's ahead of Mercer 0-2. His curved check swing foul at the plate. Ball bounced up and hit Bobby. The Brewers are yelling that it hit Mercer out of the box. But Merrill Anthony says no. Had it hit Bobby out of the box in fair territory, he would have been out. You very seldom see that happen. You'll see it once in a while on a bunt attempt. The bat is trying to get out of the box in a hurry. Munson leads off first, Clark off second, no score, bottom of the first. 
Oh, quick pitch, and Mercer hits one to left field. Over there is John Briggs, and Briggs makes the catch. And I tell you, Lockwood quick pitch in that time. Bobby had to be ready. He did get a piece of the ball. And that brings up Danny Cater. Danny hitting 253, two doubles, and four runs batted in. Danny got off to a real slow start, but he has steadily been picking up. 19 hits and 75 at bat. On deck, Felipe Alou. Lockwood now looking at his pitching hand and uh, shaking it a little bit. Now goes to the rosin bag. And you, know, you get a lot of pitchers who have tender fingers and uh, subject to blisters. A little early in the night to be getting a blister. High clock leads off second. Munson off first. Pitch to Cater. Swing and a foul back. Strike one. So it took Lockwood two hitters. Clark and Munson, he walked both of them. Get his control, and he's got it now. Very often a pitcher comes into a ballpark for the first time in the season. Well, not necessarily just the first time, but uh, takes that mound. It's a lot different than throwing on the sidelines. You have to get used to the mound. They're all supposed to be the same height and everything, but they each one is just a little bit different. Right. Round ball right at the shortstop. Up with it is Auerbach over to the second baseman, Kubiak, for the fourth play. Skip Auerbach to Ted Kubiak, and for the Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors, two men left. At the end of one full inning, it's Milwaukee, nothing, and the Yankees, nothing. Nothing is more important to the life of your engine than the oil you put in it. That's why your Arco Red Ball dealer doesn't just promise to check your oil, he guarantees it. In fact, if an Arco Red Ball dealer doesn't check your oil or clean your windshield, weather permitting, you get your gasoline for free. Red Ball service is your Arco dealer's way of assuring you of good service. So that you get the same good service when you're on vacation as you get at home. So that you get the same treatment from a dealer who doesn't know you as you do from the guy in your neighborhood. The details may vary from state to state, but the quality of Red Ball service never varies. If it does, you don't have to pay. Arco Red Ball dealer service. You're ahead even when you don't get it. So they have some fine young pitchers. This uh, kid Skip Lockwood who's pitching tonight, uh, Marty Patton and Jim Slayton who will be going against the Yankees uh, on Sunday. Fine uh, young Thank pitcher. You. And uh, with Frank Lane over there, they'll be wheeling and dealing. Here is Dave May hitting 268, four doubles, a triple, and six runs batted in. May a left-hand batter. Steve Klein's first pitch is a curve in there, strike one call. Dave May, 5'10 and a half, 186 pounds. From Newcastle, Delaware. Pulls that bat straight up and down. Pitch swing and a miss out of sinker. Nothing in two. On deck, Bill Voss. Bill Klein ahead of the first hitter here in the top of the second. No score. A bouncer over the pitcher's head. Up with it one-handed Michael. Slips quickly the first one off. Gene Michael continuing to do an outstanding job. at shortstop for the Yankees. And it brings up still another left-hand batter, Bill Voss. From Glendale, California. Six feet tall, 170 pounds. Left-hand batter throws left-handed. A man studying for a teaching degree. Takes a pitch high, ball one. Boss right now batting 214, 9 for 42. One homer, three runs batted in. He was with the White Sox and with the California Angels. He takes a strike on the inside corner, one and one. Ryan holds the ball out in front, gets the sign. The pitch, bouncing ball in the hole. Backhanded by Cater, throws to Klein, they got him! A tremendous play by Danny Cater and Steve Klein again. 
that one, I tell you, Kata took a base hit away from Voss, going far to his right, backhanded it, drew quickly to Klein, led him beautifully, and Klein caught the ball about 10 feet from the bag and just continued on to first, losing his cap again. Two pretty picture plays turned over by Danny Cater and Steve Klein. So there were two out in the bat of Ted Kubiak. Kubiak hitting 269. A double, two triples, and four runs batted in. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. Kubiak is a switch hitter, I believe. At least he used to be. Six feet tall, 175 pounds. Isn't he from New Jersey, too? He looked that one up. The pitch on the outside corner, strike two call. Right, New Brunswick, New Jersey. He was born in, he now lives in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Or do I say that right, or is it Waukesha? The two strike pitch, blown away. A ball and two strikes. You'll have to ask a walker shawnee. <laughs> huh? You'll have to ask a walker shawnee how to pronounce it. I don't All know. Right. The one-two delivery is filed back upstairs out of play. And then bounces all the way back down on the field. No Klein staying ahead of the hitters. Curve in the dirt, backhanded by Munson. Here's a switch hitter. The 2-2 two -two curve, bounce foul in back of the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. No score, top of the second. He fine, gets a new ball. Milwaukee's got some pretty good speed and also some pretty good power. The 2-2 two -two pitch, hard ground ball, pass clock in the right field, a base hit. That ball skipped off the dirt as Horace was going to his left. Just went by his outstretched glove. And there's the first base hit of the ball game. Ted Kubiak picking up his 18th hit of the year. It brings up Ellie Rodriguez. Ellie off to a fine start, hitting 310. Has two doubles, three runs batted in. Two men are out. Kata holds the bag against Kubiak. Kubiak has no stolen bases. Stretched by Klein. His curve in there, strike one call. On deck, Rick Auerbach. Klein to the belt. The pitch is a curve low. One ball, one strike. In 26 and two-third innings of pitching, Klein has walked only six men. If he had quick throw to first, Kubiak back. Eddie Rodriguez from the Bronx. Shadows the Yankee Stadium. The curve is high. Two balls and a strike. 5'11", 185 pounds, but don't mess with Ellie. He fought in the Golden Gloves for quite a while. Can really handle himself. And Eddie's as nice a kid as you'd want to meet. All right, Kubiak leads the way. Stretched by Klein. The pitch on the outside corner. Good pitch by Steve Klein. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Klein hides the ball in back of him as he looks for the sign. There goes the runner. The curve is bounced to third. Kenny's up with it. We'll have to go to first in plenty of time. For the Brewers, no runs on a base hit, no errors in a man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's Milwaukee nothing and the Yankees nothing. <laughs> And now here's John Burroughs with Bill Heine. They're doing their folk thing for Schaefer Beer. Schaefer Beer. 
pitchers duel between these two young right-handers, Steve Klein and uh, Skip Lockwood. Good, very well. Lockwood now has seemed to find the range. And he'll be facing Felipe Alou. Alou hitting 250, a double three homers, and six runs batted in. Well, it was the Milwaukee Brewers who came in and got the Yankees started last year. The Yankees took four games off them. Just about the same time last year, and they're in for four games. The first pitch to Alou is a curve bounced in the hole to his left, up with a one-handed hopper, fires to first, one out. Nice play by Tommy Harper. It didn't appear to be a difficult chance, but it was right in the hole, and he had to go far to his left. It brings up Jerry Kenny. Jerry hitting 267. No extra base hits. One run batted in. Hopper moves way in at third now. Jerry Kenny beat out a beautiful bunt. Last time he was used as a pinch hitter. One man out. The outfield moves in now on Kenny. Lockwood ready. His fastball and Kenny has to jump out of the way. Ball one. You hit Kenny, you're hitting a lot of bones. He is built like a greyhound. The 1-0 delivery is taken for a strike, and that was a good fastball. One and one. No score, bottom of the second. Lockwood wants another sign. Gets it from Rodriguez. Very short windup. Fastball, he bunts a little hard. Kubiak up with it, throws the first in time. Just a little bit hard. That was a Mickey Mantle type bunt. And right now, while they're throwing the ball around, this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network, and we pause for station identification. This is Steve Fitz, your contact host. Call us weeknights from 8 to midnight here on the fresh air sound of Radio 81, WGY Schenectady. All right, Gene Michael, the stick takes a pitch high and tight ball one. Gene having a fine year hitting 292. He has three doubles and nine runs batted in. He's gotten a lot of clutch hits for the Yankees. Two out, nobody on. No score, bottom of the second. On deck, Steve Klein. Lockwood kicks, delivers. It's right down the middle. Strike called. No, you hit the nail right on the head last year when the Brewers came in. Uh, the Yankees were three games under 500. When the Brewers left down, the Yankees were one game above 500. And that's the exact same thing right now. Am I right? Right. Right. Seven and ten. All right. Will history repeat? Inside. Two balls and a strike. Brewers have a couple of long ball hitters sitting on the bench tonight. Andy uh, Costco and Danny Walton. That's right. And they'll be in some of these games, and they really got power. But Costco at one time with the Yankees and the Dodgers. The pitch is a check swing, and it's low. Ball three. Blake Costco was the last player here at Yankee Stadium to hit a ball out there into the left field bleachers, wasn't he? Yeah. Or maybe Walton was. Walton they both was. Done. Yeah. Costco did it while he was with the Yankees. Walton, of course, with the Brewers. The 3-1 pitch, Michael taking all the way, doing some setting up exercises, trying to get a walk, but it's right down the middle. They were the last two. Walton was the last one. Costco next to last. Right, that's close enough. And they hit those towering high fly balls I just carried. The payoff pitch. Popped up right near the pitcher's mound. Tommy Harper comes in. Halfway between home and third, makes the catch. And the Yankees are out of there in order, and at the end of two full innings, it's Milwaukee nothing and the Yankees nothing. 
Here's Pete Retzlaff for today's United States Army. As general manager of the Philadelphia Eagles Football Club, it's my job to consider a lot of options, especially in recruiting the best potential pro prospects. Well, today's United States Army has a great new option high school graduates should consider. It's called the European Duty Enlistment Option. If you enlist now for three years in the armor, artillery, or infantry, and successfully complete a four-month training program in the United States, you're off to Europe for a full 16 months tour of duty. And your 30 days paid vacation a year gives you the opportunity to travel all over Western Europe. So if you'd like the opportunity to see Europe as few tourists do, see your Army representative for further information about a complete tour of duty under the new European enlistment option. Today's Army wants to join you. For the location of your nearest Army representative, call 800-243-6000, toll free. I asked uh, Ken Harrelson once for all this talking about him. Uh, if the, those sweatbands he wore, if they uh, had any useful purpose, he said, no. He said, I really do it to call attention to myself. He said, uh, uh, the kids uh, identify with me. He said, the young fans identify with me. And uh, he said, they like it, so I do it. Well, that's not a bad idea. I tell you, uh, as copied from him, my son Scooter. Okay. He's got the red sweatbands now that they use for tennis. Okay. And I think kids like to copy off uh, professional athletes. Uh, Kurt Blethery was uh, now. Yeah. Oh, no kidding? Yeah, he'll wear those sweatbands. All right, here's Rick Auerbach, just 21 years old, takes a strike. Now, this kid was just 21 on February 15th. They nicknamed him Reindeer. And Merle Harmon and Tom Collins, the announcers for Milwaukee, were telling me he can fly. Holds the bat right in front of him. Just punches the ball. Here's a chance to see him. Michael throws, and they just do get him. Ooh, he can get down that line. Very close play, but a fine play by Gene Michael, who must have read up on this youngster, because he didn't waste a fraction of a second getting rid of that ball. He hit one off the end of the bat. And he does have a unique batting stance. Just a short, choppy stroke. But if he's running down to first base, he gets those knees way up in the air. He's pumping. All right, here's Skip Lockwood. Our back was hitting 217. Lockwood fouls the first pitch off. He's batting 181. He's two for 11. We don't see these fellas too often, but I thought I remember this was another kid who did not start out as a pitcher. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Have to ask the boy. Ground ball hit the second base. Clark comes in up with it. Throws to first, and there's two out. Did I hear somebody say I'm right? You're no. right, Phil. No kidding? Tell me more, Frank. <laughs> not often I'm right. I oh, want to yeah. know how right I am. No, uh, you're right. You're right most of the time. All right, there are two away, and now Tommy Hopper, who bounced the third his first time up. Two men out, nobody on, no score, top of the third. Hopper with the bat way back. Swing bounces one to third, it goes foul. Talking about Lockwood a minute ago, it wasn't until his uh, fifth year in professional ball that he started uh, pitching. Uh-huh. Line ready. The one-strike pitcher bounced at a third base. Kenny backhands it, but it's foul. Two strikes. Two out, two strikes. All right, Roy McMillan coaching at first. Cal Irmer at third for the Brewers. The curve low and outside. One ball, two strikes. That's Roy McMillan was a pretty fair country shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds. And played some for the Mets. The one-two pitch hit high in the air to left center. Bobby Mercer going back. That's way up there. Bobby's under it and makes the catch. So Klein retires the Brewers in order at the top of the third and at the end of two and a half. It's Milwaukee nothing and the Yankees nothing. 
What would you think of a restaurant that guaranteed good service or your money back? You'd be ahead of the game either way, right? Well, that's pretty much what happens with Arco Red Ball Dealer Service. If your Red Ball service dealer doesn't clean your windshield or offer to check your oil, weather permitting, he'll refund the price of your gasoline. Red Ball Service is your Arco dealer's way of assuring you of good service. So that if you're on a trip, you know you're going to get the same good service you get in your neighborhood. So you get the same service from a dealer who doesn't know you as you do from a guy who's known you for years. The details may vary from state to state, but the quality of Red Ball service never varies. If it does, you get your gasoline for free. Arco Red Ball Dealer Service. You're ahead of the game whether you get it or not. Take another look at young Skip Lockwood. Uh, Phil, he played uh, third base and shortstop, as I recall. He played some third base at uh, Kansas City. Uh-huh. About too many years ago. What, about 65, I'm going to say. Yes, you know, I remember he looked like a pretty good hitter when we faced him out in Milwaukee. All right, here's not a bad hitting pitcher, young Steve Klein. Right now, he's just one for eight, batting 125, but he swings the bat pretty well. And he takes a strike right down the middle. Look at this Lockwood is sneaky fast. He doesn't rear back and fire the ball, but it really zips in there. The next pitch fastball right in there, strike two. He's trying to take two fastballs just above the knees. The two strike pitch, a curve hit, and it's a base hit to center field. So Lockwood got two fastballs by Steve Klein, tried to curve him, and Steve lined a shot past the shortstop, Skip Auerbach in the center field. The first Yankee hit of the ball game. And now Horace Clark, who walked his first time up. No score in this ball game. a short charge call. Just two blasts on the organ. Klein leads off first. Pitch the clock. It's low ball one. Remember Lockwood walked both Clark and Munson in the first inning, but they were stranded, did not advance. Klein leads away. The pitch is low ball two. Two and nothing. Klein with the jacket on at first base. Mike Egan playing in back of him. Harper has shortened up at third, and they've shortened up at short and second. They know they got to hustle to get a DP if Clark hits it on the ground. The curve is inside, ball three. Two balls, no strike. Nobody out here, bottom of the third. Thurman Munson on deck. Well, Lockwood again having trouble with Clark. He comes to the belt. The pitch is high and tight, ball four. Well, Clark walks for the second time in the ball game. That in itself is a rarity with Horace Clark, but this year Horace really looking the pitches over. And now uh, Dick Hauser calls Thurman Munson down the line, and they want to check signs to make sure they don't miss the possible uh, sacrifice sign. Or they hit signs. Thurman walks his first time up. Frank Messer had mentioned earlier, they just put it up on the big scoreboard, that the Yankees have optioned Frank Tepidino to Syracuse. The stretch, Munson squares the bunt, takes it low. Oh, if he'd have thrown right away, there's a hat Klein. He, he waited too long. Rodriguez held the ball, pumped twice. Klein had broken towards third and was at least halfway down. The curve was in the dirt, and had Rodriguez thrown right away, Klein would have been a dead duck. And as we've mentioned many times, that's a tough play for the runner at second. He sees the hitter square around, and you've got to be leaning towards third to make it, and Jerk Klein could not reverse himself in time, but he did get back. That was a ball to Munson. The pitch inside ball two. So that was a big break for the New York Yankees. Klein dove back head first, so you've got to give him A for effort for hustling back. 
A lot of the Yankees stadium dirt on his uniform and jacket. Yankees brought up Gary Jones, a left-hand pitcher. And Tepidino had to be sent down. The Yankees would have been one over the limit. All right, two and nothing on Munson. The pitch to Thurman. A curve gets away from Rodriguez, and the runners will advance. Klein goes to third. Clock to second. It's a pass ball charged to Rodriguez. There was a curve ball, and wasn't that far outside, whether he crossed up Rodriguez or not. We see Ellie talking to him now. He was looking for a fastball, and the ball broke, and it was just about six inches away from him, but he couldn't get to it. It's 3 and nothing on Munson. The two batters that Lockwood had trouble pitching to in the first inning, he walked both of them. He walked Clark on four pitches. Has a 3 nothing count now on Munson. Line at third, Clark at second, nobody out. On deck, Roy White. Time called. Munson kept looking at Dick Hauser. Now Merle Anthony, the plate umpire, said, all right, play ball. Lockwood pitching from a stretch position. The pitch is low ball four on eight pitches. Clark and Munson walk. And now the bases are loaded. And the batter, Roy White. Anthony wants to take a look at that baseball. He's going to throw it out of play. Now, strange as it may sound, this has been a difficult situation for the Yankees. Bases loaded and nobody out. For some reason or other, early in the year, they have had their trouble scoring a run. They'll score a lot easier with two out and nobody on sometimes. All right, bases loaded. White flew to center field, first time up curve inside, ball one. Lockwood now having his problems and seeming to aim the ball a little more than throwing naturally. Bobby Mercer on deck. The infield is back in double play depth. Three runners lead away, nobody out, no score. The pitch, swing and a miss. One and one. They're going to get... Uh the bullpen going now. Uh, John Gelnar and Larry Bernard start warming up in the Milwaukee Bernard, bullpen. Bernard, the old net pitcher. Yes. All right, the stretch. The curve, check swing, and it's just inside, and Lockwood wanted that one. Two balls and a strike. Two and one on Roy White, and Roy is asking somebody to move whether he's asking Clark to move. He would be the only one in his line of vision. The 2-1 pitch is hit in the air to right center field. Coming on is Dave May. Makes the catch. Klein said the throw is coming to third. They'll get nobody. The ball gets away. But over there to back up is Lockwood. And going to second base, Thurman Munson. Heads up play by Munson. Once the ball was thrown over the second baseman's head, it went between home and third. And uh, luckily, Skip Lockwood was over there. It's a sacrifice fly to center field. A run batted in as Steve Klein scores. And the error is charged to the center fielder. Dave May allowing Clark and Munson to advance. So Bobby Mercer will be the batter. Yankees out in front, one to nothing. Runners at second and third. The curve is low to Mercer, ball one. And now the infield looking at their manager, Dave Bristol. He has pulled in the right side of the infield, Kubiak and Hegan. Harper is even with the bag, but the shortstop, Auerbach, is about halfway. And they're going to put him on. They're going to load him up, an intentional walk. To Bobby Mercer, and they'll pitch to Danny Cater. And this will be the fourth walk. Make that the fifth walk given up by Skip Lockwood. He walked two in the first, three here in the third. One intentionally. And now Dave Bristol is coming out to the mound, former manager of the Cincinnati Reds. 
He's got uh, Gilmar and now Dick Ellsworth warming up out on the bullpen. They just started. He's trying to buy a little time, I believe, Phil. I'm sure he is. And now plate umpire Merrill Anthony will slowly walk out. And those umpires uh, will ask the pitcher to let him know just before the umpire gets there. Bristol's still talking. Anthony gets to the mound, says, all right, fellas, let's break it up. Sure, Bristol would like to see his young right-hander work himself out of this jam. It could uh, do him a lot of good. No doubt about it. So Lockwood goes to the rosin bag. Danny Cater bounced to the shortstop his first time up. Surprised me that Dave May did not throw home. Maybe he didn't realize or forgot that Steve Klein was on third, the pitcher. And the ball was not hit that deep. All right, three men on. Mercer, Munson, and Clark. The pitch to Cater. Swing and a miss. Like one. Good serve ball that time by Lockwood. That's when he's thrown tonight. Again, the stretch. Another curve. He bunts. Good bunt. That'll score the run. He get up with it. He tags Cater. It was not the suicide squeeze. A perfectly executed bunt with the infield back. So Cater gets credit for a run batted in. A sacrifice as Clark scores. And the Yankees go out in front two to nothing. And that's something the Yankees have not been doing so far this year. But Ralph Hoff figures a run now is just as good as in the ninth inning. And they have the infield back, never expecting Cater to bunt. Here is Felipe Alou, bounce to third his first time up. Munson at third, Mercer at second. The pitch to Alou is popped up. The second baseman, Kubiak, back in shallow right field, backing up and making the catch. But the Yankees pick up two runs on just one hit. There was one error and two men left. And at the end of three full innings, it's the Yankees two and the Brewers nothing. All right, Big Frank will go over to TV now and take a look at the scoreboard. Baltimore scored two runs in the top of the first. Kansas City batting Dobson against Hedlund. Cleveland had opened to short at California later on. It's the White Sox won, the Senators won into four. Bob Johnson against Janeski. Minnesota three, the Red Sox nothing, and the four and a half cut against Nagy. And remember, Cott, a left-hander, is pitching up in Boston. The Mets at Houston, it'll be McAndrew against Griffin. The Phillies shut out the Cubs today, one or nothing. Short the winner, Pappas the loser. San Diego nothing, Pirates nothing, and a three. Roberts against Bob Johnson. Giants nothing, Cincinnati nothing, and a one. Marichal against Merritt. Dodgers nothing, Atlanta nothing, Singer against Phil Negro, and Montreal at St. Louis, it'll be Stoneman against Cleveland. Cleveland is the pitcher's name. So we get ready now for the top of the fourth inning. Yankees leading two to nothing, and coming over from the TV side, all ready to go on radio, Bill White. Thank you, Phil Rizzuto. And the Brewers will send up Mike Hegan, Johnny Briggs, and Dave May in their half of the fourth inning. The Yankees coming up with two big runs. Something tells me this is going to be a low score. Look at those bases on balls. What Frankie Frisch used to say, he yep. manages gray hair yes, early. This guy's walked five already, one of those intentional. Here's Mike Hegan. First time up, he went out. Cater to Klein. First pitch is outside for ball. On deck, the left fielder, Johnny Briggs. When the first and fourth, the Yankees leading 2-0. 1-0 pitch to Hegan. Fastball cut on, fouled off. A ball and a strike, no out. The Yankee infield, Danny Cater at first, Horace Clark at second, Gene Michael at short, Jerry Kenny at third. The outfield from left to right. Bobby uh, Mercer's in center. Roy White in left. Sleep Bell Lou in right. Next pitch is outside. Two balls and a strike. Gator, the first baseman, plays Egan to pull. Kenny's in even with the bag at third. 2-1 pitch. Fastball lined out to deep center field. Mercer's back. He has room. And he has it for the first foul.
Mike Egan. We're talking on the other side, Phil. Uh, we, we were wondering what Jim Egan was thinking or thinks when his son's up there. I said, for me, for me, I hope he had a home run every time. If were you? <laughs> yes, sir. No, that's not what Jim said. Huh? He said he didn't mind Mike going four for four as long as the Yankees won. Well, that's all right, too. Very diplomatic. Oh, yeah. Johnny Briggs cut on the first curveball and missed it for a strike. Fine is ready. Pass ball outside, just misses. Briggs started after, but held up. Briggs, just in here to the Brewers from the Philadelphia Phillies. He started the season with the Phillies. He never was content with Philadelphia. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hung on. Died to left field. Roy White has a lot of room. He waits. And they're two out. Dave May, the center fielder, is the next hitter. May came into the game hitting 268. He grounded out first time up. Charged with an error last inning. He threw home trying to get Clark. The ball was off center. First pitch is hit to Cater. Good throw over to Klein. And there's three out. That's the second time Cater's come. Third time Cater's come with a good play like that. He went far to his right, picked the ball up, threw off balance to Steve Klein, left for the first base. So for the Brewers, the near half of the fourth inning, three men up and uh, three men down at the end of three and a half innings. The New York Yankees two, the Milwaukee Brewers nothing. Here's a bright new star. A girl named Coffee singing about a beer named Schaefer. Kenny's a hitter for the Yankees in their half of the fourth inning. First time up, Jerry tried to drag a bunt. Second baseman Kubiak made a good play on him and got him out. First pitch is a fastball inside, just misses. Tommy Harper, the third baseman, way in on the grass. Egan, the first baseman, is back at normal depth. Outfield plays shallow. Next pitch is lined to left center field after it is Dave May, and he makes the catch. Kenny lining the ball in the shallow left center field. Dave May off with the crack of the bat. Caught the ball easily in left center. So there's one out. And that'll bring in the shortstop, Gene Michael. Michael popped up to the third baseman, Harper, first time up. Gene came into the game hitting 292. No home runs, nine runs batted in. Steve Klein moves into the on-deck circle. First pitch is a curve ball low. Skip Lockwood on the mound for the Brewers. Former outfielder, a good fastball, good curveball. 1-0 pitch, call strike, fastball in there. Ball in the strike, one out. The last half of the fourth with the Yankees leading 2-0. Lockwood is ready. Next pitch is high. Two balls and a strike. The Yankees took advantage of Lockwood's wildness in the third after they didn't. They didn't take advantage of it in the first inning when he walked the first two men, but got out of the inning. But in the third, he walked three, and the Yankees got two runs. Next pitch is high and tight. Three balls and a strike. One out. Now Michael takes a look at uh, Dick Hauser coaching the third. Just back in. He's ready. Low stand. Hitting left hand. Pitch is a call strike right on the inside corner at the knee. Good fastball. Three balls and two strikes. 
Harper, the third baseman, stays in on the grass. He's at least two feet inside the grass. As Lockwood is ready. 3-2 pitch to Michael. Fouled off. That'll make the seat from the upper deck. And gets down to the lower deck. The fan promptly drops it. Everybody dove in the pile. The guy who stayed outside got the ball. Lockwood is ready with 3-2 pitch. Fastball high. And Gene Michael walks. That's the sixth walk given up by Lockwood. Must be frustrating to a kid like that with as good a stuff as he's got, Bill, to be wild. Not to be able to find the plate. If you can just hold the people down as close as you can to 27 batters, you've really done a good job. But he's walked six already. He's given up only one hit. But it's behind 2 nothing. Fine step then. He squares the bunt. Down the first baseline, Mike Egan's up with it, looks at second, throws the first, and they're two out. So Steve Klein does his job. He gets Michael down to second base. And the out is from uh, Egan, Mike Egan, the first baseman, to Ted Kubiak, the second baseman. Three to four. Two out. Michael now down at second, leading off. And Hulk Clark steps in. Clark hasn't been up officially. He's been up twice and walked twice, so he uh, has yet to make an official appearance. Lockwood stretches, takes a long look. First pitch is down low to Clark. Now Lockwood wants a new ball, and he gets one. For the last of the four with the Yankees leading 2-0. Got two runs in the third. Clark waits. Next pitch is in for a strike. A ball and a strike. Bunsen waving a bat in the on-deck circle. Lockwood pitching fast now. One-one pitch to Clark. Curve ball swung on and fouled off. Well, hung up there pretty good for us. Lockwood. Every once in a while, he threw one to Steve Klein like that, and Klein got a base hit on it. Now Lockwood is ahead. They count one ball and two strikes to Horace Clark. They're two out. In the last half of the fourth inning, with the Yankees leading 2 nothing. Lockwood to the belt. One, two, six. Curve ball swung on a foul down the first baseline. Some fan with a long reach at the baseball. Ellie Howard coaching down at first for the Yankees. Dick Hauser at third. The outfield plays shallow for Hoff. That's straight away. As Lockwood stretches. Next pitch is swung on, fouled off again. Clark protecting the plate. John Briggs in shallow in left field. Dave May shallow in center. The right fielder, Bill Voss, now moves back just a little bit for Clark. The infield straight away. Lockwood to the belt. One-two pitch to Clark. Inside. Just missed. That was close. And Lockwood wanted that pitch. Runs the count. Two balls and two strikes. Gene Michael leading off down at second. There's two outs. Lockwood stretch. Two-two pitch. Curve ball. Just this. Three and two. That was close. Three balls and two strikes on Horace Clark. There are two outs. Gene Michael on at second. The Yankees lead two nothing. Win the last and fourth. 3-2 pitch. Third ball swung on a ground ball. Pass to first base. Base hit. Team Michael will score. Clark around first base in the second. Standing up. And the Yankees lead 3 nothing. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause now for station identification. This is Steve Fitz, your contact host. Call us weeknights from 8 to midnight. Here on the fresh air sound of Radio 81, WGY Schenectady. There 
to go again shows that all the Yankees took advantage of a walk to Gene Michael, the sacrifice by Steve Klein, and a double down the right field line past Egan over the bag by Horace Clark, and the Yankees now lead 3 0. Well, that's how important that sacrifice bunt is, something the Yankees weren't doing early in the year, but now it's paying off. Here's Munson. First pitch is in first drive. Munson's been up twice, neither officially, because he's walked twice. Clark and Munson have four walks between them. No one pitch to Munson. Third ball in for a strike. No balls and two strikes. Yankees leading 3 0. We're in the last half of four innings. Bachwood stretches. The 0 2 pitch to Munson. Just misses outside. One ball and two strikes or two outs. Sir Munson. The Yankees will lose Munson uh, for the most part of the next two weeks as he goes to military reserve duty. Next pitch is fouled off. A hanging curveball. Munson did not get a good cut at it, but he did foul it off. On that big scoreboard, happy birthday to our Jackie Farrell, who's at South Bergen Hospital. And a lot of the fellas went up to visit Jackie. Here's the one-two pitch to Munson. Third ball hit on the ground, right at Harper. He's up with it. The long throw to first, and Munson is out. So for the Yankees, in their half of the fourth inning, they got one run on one hit. There were no errors, and one man left on base. So at the end of four innings, the New York Yankees, three. The Milwaukee Brewers, nothing. When you think of moving, think of U-Haul. Why U-Haul? Well, most importantly, with U-Haul, you save 50 to 75% on your moving costs. There are no storage fees to worry about. Your furniture arrives at your new home along with you, and you know that everything is in perfect condition because you've taken care of it. And what's more, U-Haul offers free road service, and your possessions are protected by $2,500 cargo insurance. Choose the U-Haul carrier to fit your own special needs, all the way from a car top carrier to a 24-foot truck able to accommodate eight rooms of furniture. Packing cartons, hand trucks, and furniture pads are also available. Move the safe, easy, economical way. Go U-Haul, serving mobile America for over 25 years. See Willie Hooks, Texaco, Route 9W, Glenmont. Ribley and Harpinger, 3702 State Street, Schenectady, and Airways of Albany, 1109 Central Avenue, Albany. Or consult the yellow pages for the U-Haul dealer nearest you. Take a quick look at the scores. Baltimore leads Kansas City 2-1 to one at the end of an inning and a half. White Sox 4, Senators 1, end of uh, 5 and a half. Minnesota 3, Red Sox nothing, end of 5 and a half. Mets 1, Houston nothing, end of 1. Philly shut out the Cubs 1-0. San Diego leads the Pirates 3-0 end of 3.5. Giants Cincinnati no score after 1. Dodgers Atlanta no score after 3.5. Bill? Thank you, Philip. Bill Voss steps in for the Brewers. He's over 1. First pitch is a curveball. Misses outside. First time up. Voss bounces back to fly. Prosticator. 1-0 pitch. Curve ball, grounded down, foul past the first base line. Peter couldn't reach it. And the first base umpire, George Maloney, right on the line, called it foul. A ball on the strike to count to Bill Vaughn. He's flying, the young pitcher looks there. He's ready. 1-1 one, one pitch. Down low for ball. Two balls in the strike. We're at the top of the fifth with the Yankees leading 3-0. Lines ready. 2-1 pitch. Pass ball. Swung on it. Sky high to center field. Mercer is back. He waits. And there's one away.
Ted Kubiak, the second baseman, steps in. He has the only hit for the Brewers. Single to right field. He's one for one. Steve Klein is ready. First pitch is down low for ball. On deck to catcher, Ellie Rodriguez. Next pitch is a breaking ball in for a strike. Klein has done a good job. He's got the Brewers out one, two, three in the first, third, and the fourth inning. One, one pitch, down low. Two balls and a strike. The only inning he pitched to a man over regulation was in the second inning when this kid Kubiak singled the right field. Other than that, he's handled the Brewers. Two and one. Fastball line to center field, base hit. Mercer's in it, up with the ball, and gets it into second base, and Ted Kubiak is on with his second hit. That'll bring in Ellie Rodriguez, the catcher. He grounded out from Kenny Decatur the first time. Now Klein will have to stretch. Rodriguez, right-handed hitter, steps in. Once the property of the Yankees. Line stretches. First pitch. Ball strike on the outside corner, right on the knee. No balls in the strike to count to Rodriguez. Kubiak leads his first. The Yankee outfield bunches Rodriguez. They play him to hit straight away with Mercer in shallow in center field. Lines to the belt. Go one pitch outside. Ball in the strike. One out. We're in the first of the fifth with the Yankees ahead, 3-0. Klein looks in as much. He likes what he sees. He's stretching. 1-1 pitch to Rodriguez. Swung on and popped up. Clark is back there. He calls for it. And there are two outs. Rick Arbach, a little shortstop in next. Arbach hit a dribbler down to Gene Michael first time up. Gene took his time and just nipped Arbach at first. Kid runs pretty good, young shortstop. Rick Arbach, A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H. Kubiak Lee, first pitch, serve ball in for a strike. Steve Klein, giving up two hits, both to Follow on at first now, Kubiak, but he's handled everybody else. And he's ready. Oh, one one pitch to Arbach. Misses. Munson blocks the ball, keeps it in front of him. And there's no advance. Curve ball in the dirt as Munson bounced out on quickly. And the count is one and one. A ball and a strike, two outs. First half of this inning. Yankees three, the Brewers nothing. 1-1 one, one pitch, third ball hit on Michael. He's up with it, tosses to Clark, the fourth out at second. And that's the third out for the Brewers in their half the fifth. No run on one hit, there were no errors and one man left on base. At the end of four and a half innings, the New York Yankees three, the Milwaukee Brewers nothing. 20th century America is the world's most mobile society. And as the years go by, it's becoming even more mobile. Chances are you've moved at least once in your life and will probably move again, perhaps in the near future. If so, learn what millions of Americans already know. Most of the expense and anxiety of moving can be eliminated by moving yourself with a U-Haul truck. Not only are you assured that your possessions will arrive at your new home along with you, but you know they're in perfect condition because you took care of it. U-Haul trucks come in five sizes, the largest able to accommodate eight rooms of furniture, and you can rent a U-Haul truck one way. U-Haul trucks and trailers, serving mobile America from over 14,000 locations. Cazaza, Texaco, 151 Grand Street, Albany, Mayfair, Texaco, 261 Saratoga Road, Glenville, Airways of Albany, 1109 Central Avenue, Albany, or consult the yellow pages for the U-Haul dealer nearest you. 
Well, tomorrow it'll be Stan Bronson for the Yankees and Lou Krause for Milwaukee. And Lou Krause was one of the first of the big bonus boys, and he was signed by his dad, Lou Krause Sr., which wasn't a bad deal. He got us some one of the biggest bonuses. And by the way, Bill White, how much did you get to sign when you came into the big league? A pair of shoes worth twenty-two fifty. You know you got more than me? <laughs> I got a glass of milk and a ham sandwich this time with the Yankees. So it makes you want to fight a little harder for the big money. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but that's a big help, you know. When you get that big oh, bonus yeah. from Godway. It can also be a hindrance. Yep, you many know, times. You might sit on it and yeah. say, uh, I don't have to work too hard. But that's not true. Here's Roy White. First pitch is grounded down to Hegan at first. He's up with it. He'll take it by himself. And there's one out. Roy White cutting on the first pitch. Grounded the ball down to Mike Hegan. And he took it unassisted. Roy had driven in one of the three Yankee runs. In the last inning, with a sacrifice, sacrifice fly, his eighth run batted in of the year. Bobby Mercer. Mercer has flied out, and he was walked in ten. Lockwood is ready. Curveball swung on in the right field, base it on the ground. Boss is up with the ball as Mercer stops the first base. Bobby Mercer, one for two now. That is only the Yankees' third hit against Kip Lockwood. But Lockwood is helped the cause by walking six Yankees. And Danny Cater steps in. The last time up, Cater bunted to the first baseman, Egan. And Horace Clark was running. And Ford, that hit by Mercer, has him up now to 382. Bobby Mercer hitting 382. Lockwood stretches as Cater waits. First six is outside for ball. Everybody looks down at Hauser now. Mercer has stolen four bases in addition to hitting 382, and he leads at first. Yankees leading 3 nothing. Last of the fifth. Next pitch to Cater, grounded down to the shortstop. Arbach over to second for one, he drops the ball, and the umpire, Hank Thor, says base. He did not feel that Kubiak was taking the ball out of the glove, Bill. No, that's right. He didn't have control of it long enough. He wanted to take it out and get rid of it quickly. It looked like Auerbach took a little extra time giving him the ball, and he was worried about Mercer come sliding in. That's a big break for the Yankees on that era. So you'll have to give the second baseman, Ted Kubiak, an error. And Felipe Alou steps in. Lockwood backs off now as Mercer takes the long lead at second. Gator moves back to first. There's one out, and the Yankees are leading 3-0. And they're half and a fifth. Now Lockwood is ready. First pitch to Alou is a breaking ball outside. Give an assist to the shortstop, Arbach. And an error to the second baseman, Kubiak. And the Yankees are threatening again. Lockwood is ready. Alou waits. Next pitch, the curveball swung on right back to Lockwood. He gets it up, wheels the ball to first base, and they're two out. Both runners advance. Mercer down to third. Cater down to second. And Jerry Kenny will be the batter. Jerry's over two, grounded out first time, fly to center field in the fourth. Kenny, a left-handed hitter, Lockwood, big right-hander. Looking in, on deck is Dean Michael. Now Lockwood is ready. First pitch to Kenny, curveball in the dirt for ball. Harper, third baseman, will give Kenny no room at all there at third. He's way in on the grass. The outfield plays Kenny straight away and shallow. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball hit on the ground. Arbach, the short stops over, takes a long hop, throws the first, and they're three out. So for the Yankees in the last half of their city, no run on one hit. There was one error and two men left on base. So at the end of five, the New York Yankees three, the Milwaukee Brewers nothing. Baseball.
Wall has come a long way since the days of Abner Doubleday. There are plays, umpires, and a long set of rules about how the game should be performed. The automobile has come a long way from its beginning, too. Today, you can get a car in any number of sizes, shapes, and styles, and many with engines designed to give you better mileage than ever before. Arco Supreme Gasoline is also designed to help give you good mileage. Arco Supreme helps keep deposit from clogging the air passages of your engine. Deposits that can cause your car to waste gas and cause you to lose mileage. If you're running out of gasoline when you don't want to, try Arco Supreme Gasoline. You may not get that much more mileage on it, but sometimes a little more is enough. Bristol is going to send in a pinch hitter to hit for Skip Lockwood, and he's Ron Fieldbold. A little infielder. He's only 5'8", 165. From Oakland, California. Fieldbold hitting for Lockwood. Leading off in the Brewers' half of the sixth. First pitch is in for a strike. Yankees leading 3-0. Steve Klein looks in. He's ready. Yo, one pitch. Ball misses outside. A ball and a strike. The ball was acquired from the Washington Senators. One, one pitch. Curve ball misses. First sign with the Chicago Cubs. Started off in 1964 at Fort Worth. Played last year with Denver, Indianapolis. Three balls and a strike to the bowl. Klein hasn't walked a man tonight. He struck out only one also. He's had the Twins hitting the ball in the ground. For the most part. Here's the 3-1 pitch. High, ball four. So field bowl becomes the first brewer walked by Klein. And Tommy Harper steps in. Harper's over two. He's drawn it out and fly it out. He's a good bunner, good drag bunner. Handles the bat well. Excellent base runner. Keep him off the base, they can't steal though. Klein stretches. Steel bowl lead. First pitch to Harper. Breaking ball in for a strike. Kenny, the third baseman, even with the bag at third. Danny Cater holding steel bowl on at first. The right fielder playing shallow, and they punch Harper. Yankees leading 3 0. First of the six. Next pitch to Harper. Grounded down to Michael. He's in up with it over to Clark for one. And Clark is rolled by Steel Bowl, and he has no chance for the double play. But Theobald is forced to second. Well, there's one out now, and that'll bring in the first baseman, Mike Egan. Egan's over two, grounded out and slide out. Left-handed hitter. Gator will hold Harper. Now Lou moves back near the track in right field as the left-handed Egan steps in. First pitch to him. Cut on, fouled off down the left field line in the upper deck. Harper, back to first. Roy McNaughton coaching down there first for Milwaukee. Played some shortstop for Cincinnati and the Atlanta Braves when they were the Milwaukee Braves. Little Texas. Lines ready. The old one pitch to Egan. Like two call. Egan backed off. The ball really must be moving. He backed off of that, and the ball cut the inside corner. No balls and two strikes. There's one out. 
We're in the first of the sixth with the Yankees leading 3 0. On deck, Johnny Briggs. Another left handed hitter. Egan now chokes up just a bit. He has a slightly closed stand. Go two pitch, outside for ball. One ball and two strikes. Fine looking at it much. Takes a long look. Now he's ready through the belt. One two pitch, just misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. Two and two. One out. Fine looks there and much. Now oh, he's ready. Two two pitch. High ball three, three balls and two strikes. Well, Klein, uh, he'll uh, have to watch it here. Harper takes a peek at the third base coach. He might move. Harper, fine base runner. The count three and two on Egan, and Klein's ready. Harper does not run. Ball is hit out in the left field, right at Roy White, who's there, and he has it for the second out. So Mike Egan flies right to the left fielder White, who had to move only a step or two. And that'll bring in John Briggs, the left fielder. Briggs has struck out and fly it out to White in left field. That's by Klein. First pitch to Briggs. Curveball swung on, pops up to left field. White digging hard. Will he get it? He loses his cap, and he has it. Roy White had to come a long way for that one. He lost his cap in the process, but he just got to the ball for the third out. So for the Brewers in their half of the six, no run on no hit. There were no Yankee errors, and one Brewer was left on base. At the end of five and a half innings, the New York Yankees three, the Milwaukee Brewers nothing. Here's the bright young sound of Ken Stella. He's singing about the bright, rewarding taste of Schaefer beer. Lockwood. Lockwood pitched five innings. He only gave up three hits. He walked six, which proved his downfall. Struck out none and allowed the three runs. Now John Gellner's in there. That's a big right-hander, Gellner. And he'll have to face Gene Michael, Steve Klein, the pitcher, and Hoff Clark. The Yankees came up with their two runs in the third inning when uh, Steve Klein let off with a single. Horace Clark walked. They were then there was a pass ball. Both runners moved up. Munson walked. Roy White had a sacrifice fly. Mercer was walked intentionally, and then Danny Cater bunted in Clark. First pitch is high to Gene Michael. One ball and no strike. And then in the fourth inning. After Jerry Kinney flied out, Michael Walk sacrificed the second by Klein. Second pitch is high. Two balls and no strikes. And then Hoss Clark doubled inside the first baseline for the third Yankee run. So the Yankees are leading 3 nothing. when the last half is six. 2 0 pitch to Michael, then for a strike call. Two balls and a strike. The 
pick is 0 for 2. But he did 0 for 1. Sorry. Guys deep to right field. But Voss is there. And Michael's the first down. Now he's 0 for 2. Kind of counted that walk in the fourth. What's he scored? Here's Steve Klein, the pitcher. He gets a good hand. He's only given up two hits so far. First pitch to Klein. Right on the outside corner. Good fastball from Gelner. John Gelner in relief of Chip Lockwood. We're in the last of the six with the Yankees leading 3 0. Gelner's ready. Swung on and missed the breaking ball. No balls and two strikes on Steve Klein. He gets his ripples in. He doesn't play around at bat. Not a bad hit and pitcher. Third ball hit a base hit to left center field. That'll fall in. May over, he's up with it. He gets the ball in the second base, and Steve Bryant is on with his second single. Well, he's two for two. Singled and scored a run in the third. He bunted Michael over from uh, over to second from where uh, Michael scored in the fourth. And now he's on with a single to center field in the sixth. And that'll bring in off Clark. Clark is one for one. Walk twice. Doubled in the fourth to drive in the third Yankee run. First pitch to Clark is a high fastball. Hagan's playing behind the flying first. Gellner stretch. Next pitch to Clark, inside. Two balls and no strikes. Hey, Ron Hansen and Mike Kekich will sign autographs tomorrow. That will follow, let's see, that'll be at 12 o'clock at the Yankee Autograph booth. The gates will open at 12 tomorrow, right? Two hours before game right. time. Gellner's ready. Two old pitches outside. Three balls and no strikes to Horace Clark. Herb Munson's on deck. John Gellner to the belt. Three no pitch to Clark. It's taken high. Ball four. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause now for station identification. This is Steve Fitz, your contact host. Call us weeknights from 8 to midnight here on the fresh air sound of Radio 81, WGY Schenectady. So Pine jogs on down to second where he's stationed. Our Clark down at first. Thurm Munson steps in. Thurm's over one. He walks twice and grounded out. There's one out. In the last of the sixth inning, the Yankees leading 3 0 as Gellner gets ready. First pitch to Munson to breaking ball in for a strike. Brewers infield. Mike Egan at first. Ted Kubiak at second. Rick Arbach at shortstop. And Tommy Harper the third base. Next pitch to breaking ball in for a strike. No balls and two strikes on Thurm Munson. The outfield, Johnny Briggs, just acquired from the Collegiate playing left field. Dave May in center field. And Bill Voss, the right fielder. Brian leads off at second. Clark off at first, as Gellner's ready. He backs off now. Munson steps out. Gellner probably didn't like the sign. Now he looks in at Rodriguez and gets another one. Big fella stretches. The 0 2 pitch to Munson. Inside, just missed. One ball and two strikes. A ball and two strikes on Munson. Last of the six. Yankees three, the Brewers nothing. Gellner to the belt. One 2 pitch. Third ball, swung on, fouled off. Munson waiting good on that pitch. Got a good ripple at it. Fouled it straight down. So the count remains the same. One ball and two strikes. Ryan back to second. He tags. 
Clark tags up at first again. Now they lead. And Gellner stretch. One-two pitch to Munson. Fastball high and away. Two balls and two strikes. Gellner from Granite, Oklahoma. And he's ready. 2-2 two -two pitch to Munson. Cut on, fouled off. Back up in the seat in the upper deck. Counts the same. Two balls and two strikes. Gellner came to Milwaukee in 1969 as part of a trade that sent Lou Piniella to the Kansas City Royals for Steve Whitaker. Big fella started his uh, pro baseball career in the Pittsburgh Pirate Organization. John Gellner, he's ready. 2-2 two -two pitch to Munson. Curve ball outside. Three balls and two strikes. For the last of the six, there's one out. Steve Klein's on his second. Horace Clark is on his first. The Yankees lead 3-0. And Munson, sir, Munson looking for his first in of the night. As Gellner stretches. 3-2 pitch, line to right field, that's the base hit. Flying around third, he will score. Clark making the third. He is held up there, and Munson is in at second base as Voss receives the ball and gets it into Kubiak. And the Yankees now lead 4 nothing. Munson doubles into the right field corner. I'll tell you, maybe the Yankees got an inkling of the score. Kansas City came up with three runs in the third, and they lead Baltimore four to two now at the end of three. Well, Munson lined the double down the right field line. And that's the Yankees' fourth run. And here is Dave Bristol, the manager, walking slowly out of the Milwaukee dugout. And he's already called for a pitcher. And that's all for Gellner. Gellner then would pitch one third of an inning. And he'll leave with two Yankees on. He's given up uh, two hits. He's given up uh, one run so far, and these two are his responsibility. He walked one batter. That was Hall Park. The seventh walk given up by the Milwaukee pitching staff today. Two pitches that uh, Bristol has used. And the Yankees will try to add to their 4 nothing lead. The Yankees scored two runs in the third inning as Steve Klein let off with a single. Hawk Clark walked. Both of them advanced on a pass ball. Thur Munson walked to load the bases. And then Roy White drove in Klein with a sacrifice fly to center field. Bobby Mercer was intentionally passed, and Danny Gator bunted to the first base of Egan, driving in Hawk Clark. In the next inning, in the fourth, after Jerry Kenny fly to center field, Gene Michael walked. He was sacrificed the second by Klein, and Hawk Clark doubled him in. So the Yankees up to that point led 3-0, and then in the sixth, this inning, Gene Michaels tied to the right fielder Bill Voss, but Klein, the pitcher, singled again for his second base hit. For Clark walks, Thurm Munson doubles, scoring Klein, sending Clark to third base. And Bristol felt that Gelder had enough, and he's brought in Dick Ellsworth. Ellsworth from Lux, Wyoming, 6'4", 197, left-hander, with the Fresno High. Same school as that big right-hander, Maloney, Jim Maloney. Were in fact, I believe, Philip, they played on the same uh, baseball team. Yeah, a lot of good ball. athletes come out of that high school. You start off with the Chicago Cubs. Had a lot of good years with the Cubs from 60 to 66. We played together Philadelphia in 1967. Then he went to Boston in 68. Cleveland, uh, part of 69. 69 and 70. Milwaukee last year. Last year he was 0-0. He got in 14 games with the Brewers. 
only pitched 16 innings. Gave up 11 hits, three runs, all three of those earned. ERA of 1.72. Now, Ellsworth is a left hander. He doesn't throw hard. He has a sinker and a slider and a curveball. Look at him. You figure you're going to hit him. And he gives you that nice little soft color. Especially tough on left handers the only guy ever saw a strikeout mutual four times in a row. No, did not All with sliders. Wow. He had come up with a slider, and mutual had never seen it before. Uh, you know, in the years of mutual was batted against him, he hadn't shown Santa slider. And struck him out four times in a row in Chicago. Mm. Oh, Roy White steps in. He's about right-handed now. Roy's over two. He's got an RBI. Dick Ellsworth on the mound. Infield in. First pitch of the curveball down in the dirt. The Brewer infield is in. Harper third. Bob Box the shortstop. Kubiak the second baseman. And Mike Keegan the first baseman. Nick Ellsworth on the mound. 1 0 pitch to White. Fastball hit out into the center field. Mays over. And he'll get it. Crack tag. The throw will not get him. He can cut it off. So Roy White comes up with his second sacrifice fly and his second RBI, and the Yankees lead 5 nothing in their half of the sixth. With two out, Bobby Mercer steps in. Bobby slide out, walked intentionally, and single. 382, Bobby's hitting. Mercer, a left-hander. Facing the left-hander, Ellsworth. Now the center fielder, May, moves over more toward right center. Bunsen leads off the second. Curve ball of Mercer's outside. On deck, the first baseman, Danny Cater. Now May moves more straight away in center field. Briggs, the left fielder, is in shallow and straight away. 1-0 pitch. Outside. Two balls and no strikes. The right fielder, Bill Voss, is deep. The infield plays Mercer to pull with the second baseman, Kubiak, back on the grass. Ellsworth okays the strike. 2 0 pitch. Third ball in, first strike. Two balls and a strike. There are two outs. We're in the last of the six. Yankees leading 5-0. First, their left-hander with a crouch. 2-1 pitch. Curve ball high. Rodriguez takes the second, takes the throw down the second, but Munson's back. Now Munson takes the lead off the second with a count 3-1 and one to Mercer. Munson's taking a long look in there at that catch. He might be trying to steal the signs down there. 3-1 pitch to Mercer. Curveball swung on a miss. Bobby out in front on a breaking ball. Just like me, I ought to have been guessing fastball too. <laughs> uh, one of the few times Bobby's been trying to pull that outside pitch. Three and two, they're two outs. Yankees ahead 5 0 as Ellsworth stretches. 3 2, curveball, grounded right to Egan. He's up with it, tosses to Ellsworth, and they're 3 out. So, for the Yankees in their half of the six, they've got uh, one run. Two runs. They've got two runs. I'm sorry. They've got two runs on two hits. There were no errors, and one man left on base. And at the end of six innings of play, the Yankees have five runs on five hits and no errors. The Milwaukee Brewers have no runs on two hits, and they've committed two errors. Of course, U-Haul has been doing a great job helping people move now for over 25 years. They offer over 50 different combinations of trucks and trailers to get people and possessions moved from one home to another, inexpensively and conveniently with free road service, $2,500 cargo insurance, and one-way rentals. But did you realize that U-Haul trailers and trucks can simplify all kinds of moving chores? 
like hauling gardening materials, lumber for a do-it-yourself project, or wood for the fireplace. No matter what your hauling needs, think first of U-Haul trucks, trailers, econoline vans, and car top carriers. With over 14,000 locations all across America, U-Haul is sure to have what you need when you need it. U-Haul, serving mobile America for over 25 years. See Tellerico and Sons Arco, Route 4 to Freetsville, Johns Texaco, Kinderhook Street, Valencia, and Airways of Albany, 1109 Central Avenue, Albany. Or consult the yellow pages for the U-Haul dealer nearest you. Atlanta, six. L.A., nothing at the end of five. And Montreal and St. Louis, no score at the end of an inning and a half. And with the Yankees leading five, nothing, going into the top of the seventh, here's Frank Messer. Okay, Bill White, thank you very much, and good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Dave May leads off against Steve Klein. The youngster's first pitch is low, ball one. Klein has allowed only two base hits, both singles, and both of them by Ted Kubiak. Kubiak will be the third man up in this inning. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike call to Dave May. May is a left-hand hitter. May started the evening batting 268. And he's over two. The pitch. Fastball is low. Two balls and one strike. They take strike two, two and two. Dave May from Newcastle, Delaware. And the pitch. Get on the ground, right side. Cater backhands it to Klein, and he's out at first base. Danny Cater swinging wide to his right. Bill White, uh, you watch first base, pretty much like Rizzuto watches the shortstop. It seems to me that Danny Cater is swinging wider to his right these days than he did uh, perhaps earlier in the year. Well, Phil uh, Rizzuto mentioned before he left that uh, Cater seems to be better going to his right than he is going to his left. And he's made uh, three or four good plays there and made perfect passes to climb off balance. The batter now is Bill Boss. He takes the call strike. Boss has routed out, slide out the center. It was on Boss that... Uh, Gator and Klein came up with a fine play back in the second inning. This pitch is in the dirt, almost hit him. One ball and one strike. Ted Kubiak is on deck. Fine wind, one one pitch. Get on the ground to Gator, and he knocks it down, but will not have a play. There, Cater had to go to his left as that ball was right down the line. He got to it, knocked it down, but could not come up with it. It is a base hit and the third of the ball game for Milwaukee. As that ball got through Cater, it could very well have been a double. Boss has good speed. And now Kubiak, who has the other two hits for Milwaukee. Single to right in the second inning. Single to center field in the fifth. He takes low and outside, ball one. Kubiak, a switch hitter, batting left. Cater plays deep. Not holding Boss on with a 5 nothing lead. Instead, Cater playing the line. Line to the belt. Delivers. Drag is called. One and one. Line got the breaking pitch in there. Klein has uh, walked only one man. That was the pinch hitter, Ron Theobald, back in the sixth inning. He has now allowed three singles. He delivers one and one, and the curve is butted foul back to the screen. Kubiak trying to take advantage of Jerry Kenny there. Trying to butt it down the third baseline and fouled it back, a ball and two strikes. Then late tomorrow, Saturday, will be Senior Citizens Day and also Ladies Day here at Yankee Stadium. One two pitch to Kubiak. It is high. Two balls and two strikes. 
Cal Emmer, the third base coach, claps his hand, shouts down some encouragement. Roy McMillan coaches at first base for the Milwaukee Brewers. Yankees lead 5 0. The set by Steve Klein, his 2 2 pitch coming. Ruby Axe Twain sends a fly ball under left field. Roy White going back, going back. He's there. Glove up makes the catch. Ross, halfway to second, retreats to first base, and there are two down. Brings up the catcher, Ellie Rodriguez. Rodriguez has routed out to third and popped up to the second baseman. Yankees lead 5 0 here in the seventh inning. Boss at first, two out. Line stretches. Kicks and delivers. Sure ball for strike. Bill White, Steve Klein has just had excellent control tonight. Yes, he has. I believe he's only walked uh, one man. Of course, he only has the one strikeout, but he's done him hitting the ball on the ground or in the air. Fastball and on the ground a second. Clark has it. Makes his underhand flip to Gene Michael. They execute the fourth play at second base, retiring Boss and the side. No runs, the base hit. There were no Yankee errors, and a man is left. At the end of six and a half, the score. Yankees five, Milwaukee nothing. When you think of moving, think of U-Haul. Why U-Haul? Well, most importantly, with U-Haul, you save 50 to 75% on your moving costs. There are no storage fees to worry about. Your furniture arrives at your new home along with you, and you know that everything is in perfect condition because you've taken care of it. And what's more, U-Haul offers free road service, and your possessions are protected by $2,500 cargo insurance. Choose the U-Haul carrier to fit your own special needs, all the way from a car top carrier to a 24-foot truck able to accommodate eight rooms of furniture. Packing cartons, hand trucks, and furniture pads are also available. Move the safe, easy, economical way. Go U-Haul. Serving mobile America for over 25 years. See 9 and 20 Auto Sales and Service, Junction 9 and 20, Castleton, Ray's Arco, 10 Broad Street, Glens Falls, Airways of Albany, 1109 Central Avenue, Albany, or consult the yellow pages for the U-Haul dealer nearest you. Mike Messer. Let's see. The Yankees are going to send in Danny Cater and then uh, Felipe Alou and Jerry Kenny in their half of the seventh as they're trying to protect and add on to this 5 nothing lead. Seen some good plays on at first base by this fellow Danny Cater. Yes, sir. Danny Cater is surprising everybody, I think, with his uh, sacrifice spot back in the third inning to knock in a run. Cater officially is over two. First pitch to him from Ellsworth gets the outside corner strike one. Lele Fayalu is on deck. Yankees five runs, five hits. Brewers no runs on three hits. The wind up of the pitch coming. Line drive just foul down the third base side. Easy call there for John Stevens. That sinking line drive was headed right for his right foot, which is in foul territory and missed by about six inches. No ball, two strikes on Keter. Dick Ellsworth, the third pitcher employed by the Milwaukee Brewers, rocks and deals. Keter takes just outside. A ball and two strikes. Danny started to go. Check the foot. And the one-two pitch will be done. Ellsworth turns it loose. Curve ball rocks foul. To the left side again, just past Coach Dick Houser. A ball and two strikes. Dick Ellsworth. First throw again in 1958. Throw ball. One-two pitch here. In the air to left field. Moving to his left, getting under it, the left fielder, and a one hand grab made by Johnny Briggs. Batter will be Felipe Alou. 
Then they play his goal for three, grounded out to third, popped up to second, and bounced back to the pitcher. Ellsworth first pitch to him, low and inside, ball one. In 1968, Ellsworth won 16 games for the Boston Red Sox. Eight of those 16 wins came at Fenway Park. Her ball is going inside, ball two. And the there aren't full of the wind there, are they? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He, he did. I have to consider that to be quite a year. I was talking to Whitey Ford about it a little while ago. And Whitey said a left-handed throws the sprinkler as Ellsworth does. He can keep it down and he can win in any ball play. Ball three, three and oh. And the 3 nothing pitch. Right down the middle, taken all the way for strike three and one. We got to marvel at the uh, years Mel Parnell had pitching for the Red Sox. He had to pitch a lot of those games at Fenway. Quite a big winner. 3-1 delivery. Fastball is low. Felipe walk, and that is the seventh walk allowed by Boston, uh, Boston, Boston pitching, yes. By Milwaukee pitching. That's the eighth walk. Lockwood walked six. Gelnar walked uh, one. And now one by Ellsworth. So eight walks. Yankees have five runs on five hits. But eight walks. Brings up Jerry Kenny and the pitcher's down low. Ball one. Three of the five Yankee runs reach on walk. Clark White and Gene Michael. So that's the first to pitch. Kenny swings, ground ball hit at the second baseman. Kubiak up. Over to second. Back to first base for the double play. So the Yankees are retired on a Kubiak hour box Keegan double play. No runs, no hits. There were no errors, nobody left. And at the end of seven, the score is New York 5, Milwaukee nothing. One of the nice things about owning a car is that you can travel whenever you get the urge. To the beach, the mountains, or just to the store for the daily necessities. Wherever you drive, you'll be burning gasoline. And you may be burning more than you should. One reason is that your carburetor may not be clean enough. There may be deposits that can cause your car to waste gas and cost you mileage. If this seems to be happening to you, in other words, if you're not satisfied with the performance you're getting, then you should know about Arco Supreme Gasoline. Arco Supreme helps keep deposits from clogging the air passages of your engine. Deposits that can cause your car to waste gasoline and cause you, of course, to lose mileage. So if you think you're not getting the mileage you should, try a tank full of Arco Supreme. You'll find Arco Supreme Gasoline at any Arco station. Now, you may not get that much more mileage on it, but sometimes a little more is enough. Well, the Yankees will send out another right-hander tomorrow, Stan Bonson, as they play these same Milwaukee Brewers, and he'll be opposed by a fellow who got a lot of money when he signed, Lou Proud. Of course, Lou has moved around uh, since Charlie Finley gave him all that money in Kansas City. So it'll be Stan Bonson and Lou Proud tomorrow here at Yankee Stadium. Okay, Bill. Leading off for the Brewers, Rick Auerbach takes low and outside, ball one. One ball and no strikes for Auerbach. He is grounded out to short and grounded into a fourth play, started by the shortstop. Takes a strike, it's one and one. Floyd Wicker has come out on deck to bat for Dick Ellsworth. Wicker, left-hand batter. 1-1 one, pitch one, now to Auerbach. Drag, nibbled at the outside corner, 1-2. and two.
One two pitch here. Curve is foul to the feet just past the Yankee dugout. Yankees leading five nothing. Brewers try to start something in their behalf here in the eighth inning. Steve Klein with a one and two count now. Into the windup. Kicks and delivers. Fastball hit on the ground. Slowly to third. Kenny two hops it. Fires to first base in time, and that's all for our box. It will bring up Floyd Wicker as the batter for Dick Ellsworth. This is uh, the first time this year Wicker has been to bat. He was uh, brought up in the Cardinal organization. 1968, he got in five games for the Cardinals and hit 500. Two for four. He hit too much. <laughs> Left hand batter takes the pitch right in there for a call strike one. On one pitch. Strike two is called. Got the inside corner. The reason this is Wicker's first at bat of the year, he has been on the disabled list until today. Swings the stick back and forth, and the 0-2 delivery. A ball just outside. One ball and two strikes. Yankees lead 5-0. Top half of the eighth inning, one out, nobody on. Steve Klein has allowed only three hits in the ball game. Pump, kick, fire. Wicker fouls it back upstairs. Basketball halftime score, Milwaukee 60, the Baltimore Bullets 47 at halftime in the NBA. Championship round, one, two, pitch. Hit slowly back to the mound. Klein flags it down, tags on the first base, and that's all for Wicker. Two away. And the top of the batting order, Tommy Harper. Harper came in tonight batting but 205, up 75 times now. Check that, make it 76 times with 15 minutes. He looks at a high pitch, ball one. Steve Klein takes a little breather, now he's ready to work again. As the sign from Munson, kicks and delivers. Strike call right over at the knees, one and one. One one pitch to Tommy. Curve popped up foul outside of first. Munson over toward the dugout after it. Gator comes down the line. Neither one can get to it. Back in the crowd, and the count is one and two. Base is empty, two away. Yankees out in front, five to nothing. And the one-two pitch to Harper. He checks his swing on a low fastball at two and two. Kansas City now leading Baltimore four to two at the end of five out in Kansas City. Perhaps the Yankees can pick up a game. The wind-up, 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball struck him out. Swing and a miss by Harper, and the side is retired. That is the second strikeout for Klein. The Brewers go down in order, and at the end of seven and a half, the score, New York 5 and Milwaukee nothing. Question. Is a good motor oil one that stays nice and clean, or one that gets good and dirty? Answer, good and dirty wins. Sound crazy? Well, think about this. Your engine may be tough, but it can't fight off soot and acid deposits. Deposits that can actually corrode solid steel and seal up passages. 
Now, that's why your engine needs a motor oil that does more than just lubricate and keep your car's engine from running hot. Your engine needs a motor oil that can collect and hold the deposits as they form. Arco Supreme Motor Oil does such a good job collecting soot and acids, it gets dirty. Good and dirty. The dirt in Arco Supreme Motor Oil is a sign that it's working hard to help stop deposit buildup. So the next time your motor oil needs changing, ask your Arco dealer for Arco Supreme Motor Oil. Arco Supreme Motor Oil. The dirtier it gets, the better it's working. Frank well, Messer, that left-hander Lopez ran out there. Marcelino Lopez is the uh, new pitcher for the Brewers. They got him from the Baltimore Orioles and will be back to the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause now for station identification. This is Steve Fitz, your contact host. Call us weeknights from 8 to midnight here on the fresh air sound of Radio 81, WGY Schenectady. There's Lopez. They got him from the pitcher Rich Baltimore Orioles. Lopez uh, had a fine year back in 1965 with the California Angels, won 14 and lost 13. And he's not been a double figure winner since. Gene Michael leads off against him, takes the first pitch in there for a call strike. Lopez, left hander. And it is low this time for a ball, one at one. Lopez, the fourth pitcher used. Lockwood started. He's the pitcher of record. Then Galnar, Ellsworth, and now Lopez. Left hander winds and fires. Off the outside corner ball to two and one. Marcelino Lopez has been in eight games, one win, no losses. He's pitched eight innings. Comes over the plate with low ball three. Lopez, after his fine year for the California Angels, came up with a four arm. Been questionable since then. Three one pitch. Strike call. Michael taking all the way. Four job three and two. I'll tell you, if Lopez ever regains the form he had in 1965, somebody's going to have himself a fine pitcher. He turns to lose in the dirt. Ball four. Michael is on. applause for young Steve Klein. Don't you know that kid feels good? 23 years old. Not a large crowd here at the stadium tonight. In fact, 7,023, but they gave him quite an ovation. He's up there to butt, pops it foul behind the plate, on the screen. Klein has a perfect night going as a hitter. Two for two. Singled twice. Scored two runs. Sacrificed once. No balls in the strike. Let's see if the sacrifice or the butt is still on. Michael leads away at first. Keegan holding the corner. Klein squares away, takes down low. One and one. Stretch by Lopez. Left hander fires. Klein fouls it back again on a butt attempt. And the count is one ball and two strikes. Steve Klein, I think it was his second start last year, won a ball game here at Yankee Stadium and also had three base hits. If they take butt off here, he'll have a chance to go for his third hit in this game. A ball and two strikes. Lopez to the belt. The butt is still out. It is butted down the first baseline. And Lopez picks it up, tags Klein. Michael goes to second. And there's one away. So Klein maintains his perfect night, as he will be credited with a sacrifice. One unassisted on the putout. Michael at second. Had that been a hitter other than the pitcher, they might not have had the sacrifice on or the butt on, and uh, probably would not have been credited with a sacrifice for the five to nothing lead this late in the ball game, though. I'd have been a man of power that year. <laughs> Pitches down low for a ball. Used to be automatic. You moved the runner up with a bunt, no matter what stage of the game it was. 
a sacrifice was credited, but the official scorers all got together and sort of changed that scoring rule. They got a pickoff play at second. Michael is safe. It was close. The shortstop, Arbach, raced in behind Gene Michael, got well in behind him. Lopez spun and threw, and Michael had to go back head first. It was a mighty close play. If they wouldn't give me a sacrifice, I'd have to let him uh, charge Hauser with a time at bat. <laughs> one old pitch. A strike gets the outside corner, one and one. Horace Clark has walked three times tonight and doubled. So he, like Klein, is working on a perfect night at the plate. It's one for one, two runs scored. And a run batted in. Yankees leading 5 nothing. The pitch. Check swing. Basso off the first base side of the mound. And Lopez makes the play again unassisted. Horace Clark ran around him, but ran way in toward the mound on the infield grass. So Lopez is credited with his second unassisted put out in the inning. Michael goes to third on the play. The batter will be Thurman Munson. He's walked twice, routed out to third and doubled. Yankees out in front, 5 nothing. Gene Michael at third. And the pitch. Foul back just off to our right. And into the Milwaukee Brewer broadcast area. Held down by our good buddies Merle Harmon and Don Collins. a strike to Munson. Roy White is on deck. And the pitch. Fastball is inside. One and one. One one pitch coming. Change up curve. Drops over. Strike two call. One ball and two strikes. Thurman Munson argues the point now with plate umpire Merle Anthony. Thurman still talking about that last pitch. Lopez has his time. One, two pitch. Fastball swung on him. Missed strike three. So the side is retired for the Yankees. No runs, no hits. There were no errors. A walk and a man left. At the end of eight, the score. The Yankees five and the Brewers nothing. Here's a great new group called the Straight Eight. Setting you straight about Schaefer beer. final score in from Washington. The White Sox have defeated the Senators 8-1. to one. And they beat an old teammate of theirs, Jerry Janeski. And that young Bart Johnson picked up his third win. He's uh, off to a good start. Well, the Milwaukee Brewers come down to their last turn at bat unless they can score five runs or more. And they lead it off with Mike Egan. Egan is over three. Grounded out, fly to center, and slide to left. He'll be followed by John Briggs and then Dave May. Fine wines and deals. Load outside, ball one. As Bill White told you earlier, tomorrow, the Yanks throw Stan Bonson against Luke Krauss of the Brewers. 
One all six. Drag is called. It's one and one. Also tomorrow, Frank, uh, Phil Rosito will lead an autograph for Gates. Uh, when the gates open, Phil, Mel Stottlemyre, and Ron Hans will be signing autographs at noon. All right, one and one. To Higgin, the pitch. Foul back into the mezzanine, just over the press box. Still going to have uh, Mel Stottlemyre and Ron Hanson for that uh, clinic. And uh, I think it's, it's a great idea. On selected days, the Yankees will have these clinics. And the players will take part, uh, Bill White, Bill Rizzuto, and uh, myself. And it's, it's interesting. I've seen these things done. It is. It's a lot of fun. Pitch inside. Two balls, two strikes. Not only fun, but very informative. You can uh, pick up a lot of information from the players, get a chance to ask them questions. 2-2 pitch now. Get on the ground towards first. Fielded by Cater. He steps on the bag to retire Hegan. An unassisted put out for Danny Cater. And the batter now will be Johnny Briggs. Briggs is over three. Struck out once. Slide twice to left field. First pitch to him. Inside, ball one. Yankees uh, and players getting closer to the fans than ever this year with the autograph sessions and with the clinic. 1 0 pitch now. Right down the heart of the plate, one and one. Base is empty, one away. Yankees leading 5 0. Line one, here's the pitch. Curveball, check swing, strike call, it's one and two. Both of Steve Klein's wins this year have been complete game efforts. His one two delivery. Change up is line down the right field corner. It is foul. Briggs got around as Klein pulled the string. Lined it just foul into the right field corner. Plan has the sign, arm tie. Here comes curveball, line foul again down to the right field corner. He hung that one right up there, didn't he, Bill? And Briggs jumping on after the curveball that's uh, hung up inside. Uh, of course, a slider there will give you a lot more trouble than a curveball. Briggs has a quick bat, and really, he likes the ball inside. I uh, played, uh, I think, two or three years with him uh, with the Phils, and he finally got away from there, and he's now with Milwaukee, where he feels he'll be a little more happy. The pitch to him, fastball, hit right back to Klein. He's got it to throw to first base. That's all for Briggs. Down. Well, the Boston Red Sox came from behind to beat Minnesota 4-3. to three. Red Sox scored three runs in the eighth inning to get the win. Two out. Dave May, the batter, has run it out three times. Pitch is down low to Dave May, ball one. He's left-hand batter. 16 of the out by the Brewers have been on ground ball. Line one. Delivers. Breaking pitch for strike. One and one. Steve Klein has had his pitches downstairs where he wants them. 16 ground outs. One-one pitch. Your ball is fouled off his foot. Fouled it down off his foot. The ball rolled all the way out to the mound, and that one hurt. Danny Cater's made 10 foot outs, and he has three assists. He went in the hole a couple times and behind first once, and he's got three good assists, and he has 10 foot outs. So that can show you the kind of a job that Klein is doing, keeping the ball in the infield. All right, his one-two pitch here to Dave May. Fast ball is cut on and fouled down the first baseline. Scooped up by the coach, Roy McMillan. Steve Klein. 
Trying to pick up his third one of the year. Needs one more out. Bill Bob for the third out. The ball game is over. The Yankees won it. Steve Klein walks off the field surrounded by Seven Munson, Danny Cater, Gene Michael rushing over to shake hands, and Steve Klein, even though he lost his shutout in the ninth inning, did himself proud. We'll have the totals of the recap in just a moment. Once again, the final score, the New York Yankees 5 and the Milwaukee Brewers 1. All across this land, people of goodwill are looking for a meaningful way to extend the hand of friendship to people living in ghetto areas of America. I'm here to tell you how you can help. The Community Development Foundation is a nonprofit organization that's been helping people in many parts of the world pinpoint their problems and mobilize their resources and labor to work out solutions. The Community Development Foundation has now pledged its experience, staff, and skills to tackling the big job of community building that's needed in ghetto areas of the United States. Self-help is the idea, but it needs your help to get started. For further information on how you can become a partner in this vital program, write to Community Development Foundation, 345 East 46th Street, New York, New York, 10017. That address again is Community Development Foundation, 345 East 46th Street, New York, New York, 10017. Here are your totals now on the ball game. For the New York Yankees, five runs, five hits, no errors. The Milwaukee Brewers, one run, four hits, and two errors. Steve Klein going all the way for the win. His third victory and his third complete game. His record is now three and one. Skip Lockwood, the starter for Milwaukee, was the loser. Lockwood has won one now and lost two. Steve Klein, when he pitched the shutout, for his first one of the year down in Washington allowed five hits, but did not allow a run. So this is his low hit ball game of the season, giving up only four to Milwaukee. So the club squatted again tomorrow afternoon with Stan Bonson pitching for the New York Yankees and Luke Kraus on the mound for the Milwaukee Brewers. And we hope that uh, you'll come out and see that ball game in person. If you can, of course, you can hear it right here on the Yankee Network with the two right-handers, Bonson and Trout. I'm Frank Messer speaking for Phil Rizzuto, for Bill White, for our broadcast coordinator and statistician Bill Kane, and for engineer Frank Steele saying so long from Yankee Stadium in New York. Once again, the final score, the New York Yankees 5 and the Milwaukee Brewers 1.